This is Lesson 3, Part 1, Children's Face Proportions. I'm drawing this from a photo of a little boy. And so the head is tilted, so I'm drawing a sort of tilted head. Children's heads are much rounder than adults. Drawing a line down the middle, which is sort of diagonal because the head is tilted. And the line across the center is actually going to be the brow line because children's facial features are more squashed towards the bottom of the face. I'm using a heavier pencil because I'm trying to keep this really sketchy. And it's a sort of fine art sketch for children's face proportions. So my heavy pencil that I'm using is, at the moment it's a 2B, but I will use a 4B as well. So I, the halfway between the chin and the brow is the nose and halfway between the nose and the chin is the mouth. And then the hairline sits about three centimeters roughly, depending on your scale, or 3.5 centimeters. That's the eye line that I've just drawn in and that sits not so far below the brows. Now I'm roughly sort of guessing where the uh, nose is going to sit. It's slightly more narrow than the inner corners of the eyes. Children's, children's eyes are larger than adults and tend to sit farther apart. Sorry about the shake. Now the width of the mouth corresponds to the inner corner of the eye. And these are general face proportions. Every face is different. So will just get you sort of in gear for drawing a child. So the purpose of this is preparatory drawings for a longer piece, a painting, or even a longer drawing, if that's what you want to do. So I'm drawing in the nostril. It's a sort of a bird shape, that basic sort of bird shape, but curvy. And then little ovals below the, the outer wing, if you like. So yeah, the mouth, the width of the mouth corresponds to the inner corners of the eyes. And every line is, the lines that I'm drawing down are are diagonal, but they are parallel to the diagonal center line because remember the head is tilted. The head is also slightly tilted upward. So you're, as I draw, you'll see that I'm getting the underside of the chin as well. And, and you can see a lot of the nostrils. That's because that's the sort of view that we're getting. We're getting an, a slightly under view of the face. So I'm just emphasizing the iris there because I want to because I'm kind of happy with how it's going. I just want to build on the drawing. Children's ears roughly sit between the brow line, the center line, and the nose. And that's not because they've got bigger ears than adults. Again, it's just because uh, the, the ears are proportionate as an adult's are. It's just that the, um, the facial features are sort of squished to the bottom. I'm drawing in the hairline now. And I'm still on the stage of a pencil drawing. If you just want to, sorry, a line drawing. If you just want to do a line drawing, that's fine. And leave it at that. I'm just sort of, the, the face was a bit too wide there. So I'm taking it in a bit. So I'm going to draw in more details in the eyes. And the eyes can be quite key as I've said before they're quite key to just making a person look realistic if you get all the tones into the eyes and um, going to darken the nostrils as well so just working on the main facial features the eyes the nose and the mouth and just getting a little bit of shade in there and as well children's noses are rounder and more petite generally than adult noses so shade in the brows. So even if you just got to shading in the facial features and didn't bother with the, the hair, that would be good. Uh, just work to your own skill standard. So 
So yeah, the eyes, I'm just drawing in the eyelashes at the bottom with a lighter pencil. So that's a 2H. I am working between a few pencils, but if you even just have a HB, you can get a lot of darkness from a HB and just change the pressure of your pencil to get lighter and darker. So it's absolutely fine just to use the one pencil. I just have them there handy. So it's it's good. So 2H, I usually often start with. And then when I'm sure of a drawing, I'd go in with a darker pencil. And I'd get particularly quite quickly uh, dark. The, the drawing will get quickly dark when I'm doing a sketch. Whereas I'll be much more tentative and take my time with a longer drawing. So I've sort of marked in where the pupil should be and I've marked in where the brightest spots are which is where the light is sitting into the eye and it almost looks like three tiny little windows sandwiched together that's that uh little bits of light and then under the eye lid will be usually quite dark because it's hooded by the eyelid a bit and so you're getting a bit of shade there and then there's a lighter tone in the iris going towards the bottom the outer circles, sorry, the, the outer rim of the iris tends to be darker as well. So you've got many tones there in the eye and, and that is just a sketch, but it will give you again an idea. Um, if I was doing a longer drawing, I would be more uh, detailed and spend more time. And I would probably put in a black pen for the pupil to really make the, the blackness and the whiteness um, stand out. Um. Also, just a reminder, the actual white of the eye is never pure, fully white. It's a, because it's a circle. Even if you think of that exercise in the past that we've done with the sphere, where you're making a circle look like a sphere. Um, the same sort of applies to the eye because it's a sphere. It's a white sphere. It's not fully spheric, uh, spherical. It's not a circle. It's a sort of oval or no, it is a circle, but it looks oval in the in the socket. Um you want to just have the, those bits of shade in there as well, if you can. So you'll see I've done that, like it's almost a shadow of the eyelash in the eye. So I've shaded in the mouth there a bit. I also shaded in a bit of the, um, the eyelid, shading around the nose and then getting the chin in as well a bit. So just touches, this is a sketch, it's just touches here and there to get it, looking like it's some sort of form that it's not flat so shade will really help you give a little bit of three-dimensionality to your drawing and later so next week I'm going to show you and it won't be in any great detail just a quick sort of demonstration but I'll show you a much longer version of this image that I've done and it'll be just interesting to contrast again a sketch to a longer drawing uh, in terms of what you can achieve um, in terms of the difference of style it's just quick little sketchy bits in there for the shade and the neck is always darker because it's shaded by the head and usually the foreground of the neck is brighter. So the front of the neck. Just getting in a little bit of detail there with the jumper. So he's got quite lovely big full round cheeks, got a button nose got big eyes and definitely children's mouths are different as well they're they're not as wide they're almost um there's a lot more depth in them they always have a particular expression on them i think that's even from like suckling bottles or breastfeeding or like soothers they're quite sort of pouty looking and you can, that's his tongue in there. You can't see his teeth. So getting into the hair now, I'll do a couple of little shadings in the hair. This sketch, this is obviously sped up. This sketch took me 30 minutes. And this is part one. And the next part, um, the next video is going to be sort of applying these um, proportions again to another sketch. 
and looking at a different pose of the same person. So your chosen person, try and sketch them a few times in a few different poses so you're getting to know their face and you're warming up your drawing skills as well. That's in your hand and your brain and your eye to uh, eye to brain coordination. It does take a while to warm up for me. Okay, so just putting in a few lines in there as well as shading and, and shading, you tend to use the side of your pencil um, quite, and here I'm doing it quite roughly. So I'm not too concerned with, um, if I was doing a longer pose, I might not use such an extreme side of the pencil, only tilt it slightly and get a softer uh, type of shading. But I'm being quite rough here and I think it's quite nice to do that as well and to free yourself up for sketching. And you get a totally different style, which is nice as well. There can be a lot of life, a uh, feeling of life and liveliness in sketches. So you can copy this drawing or better still, um, apply these general face proportions to a uh, photo that you have perhaps of a grandchild, a child, yourself as a child, um, your children when they were younger, a niece or a nephew, whoever. Just a little final few touches there. Now we're going to move on to the second part, which is the second pose. <laughs> 